talk about that with you in our telephone conversation now. I would like to give the floor to the Prime Minister of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, Mr. Imran Khan. Uh, Prime Minister, the floor is yours. Please, go ahead. His Excellency, Mr. Vladimir Putin, President of the Russian Federation, Excellencies, it is a pleasure to participate in the SEO summit being hosted by the Russian Federation. I wish to particularly congratulate President Putin for successfully leading SCO during these extremely troubled times. We welcome Tajikistan as the next chair of the SEO and assure them of our full support. As we speak, Excellencies, as we speak, the COVID-19 pandemic continues to rage across the world. Devastating economies, claiming lives and disrupting livelihoods. Over 50 million people have been affected by the virus and more than 1.2 million people have lost their lives. The devastating impact of the virus has affected all aspects of human interaction and especially public health and the global economy. While progress has been reported in vaccine research, it is unclear as to when the vaccine will become universally available. Humanity faces the possibility of a slow recovery and prolonged economic slump with rising poverty and inequality. Under the circumstances, the imperative of a common approaches to limit the spread of the infectious diseases, reduce the effects and develop potential remedies has increased many fold. Yet global harmony, multilateralism are undermined by rising geopolitical tensions, unilateralism and isolationism. We believe that the SEO fraternity with its core principles of solidarity and mutual support would be effective in combating the effects of COVID-19. Excellencies, this year's CHS coincides with completion of 20 years of the establishment of the SEO. Over the past two decades, SEO's prestige and influence have grown significantly. At a time when the world is bereft of global vision and shared solutions, SCO has called for effective multilateralism, with the UN playing a central coordinating role. Pakistan also deeply appreciates China's effective handling of the virus and also the material and technical assistant, assistance extended by China to others, including Pakistan. China and Pakistan also are collaborating in vaccine development with phase three trials successfully underway. On its part, Pakistan is open to sharing its own experience in effectively combating the pandemic and keeping the total cases and fat fatalities relatively low. Our collaborated policy of smart lockdowns and financial support to the most vulnerable section segments of the society prevented rapid community spread, protected the poorest from the worst fallouts fallouts of the lockdown and help stabilize the economy. Our aim has, has been not only to save people from the virus, but also save people from dying of hunger. Globally, the international community has taken some welcome steps to mitigate the adverse effects of COVID-19. But much more needs to be done, particularly for the poor who are hit the hardest both in rich and the poor nations. In this spirit, I proposed a global initiative for debt relief to address debt vulnerabilities of the developing world and to help create fiscal space for them to mitigate the impact of pandemic and achieve sustainable development. We welcome measures taken by the G20 and the international financial institutions to help developing countries, in particular, least developed countries to face economic challenges posed by, posed by the pandemic. Further steps are needed to help improve liquidity in developing countries and restore growth. 
Excellencies, the foreign policy goals of my government are in sync with the SCO's vision of regional connectivity and economic integration. SCO is des destined to play a pivotal role in the emerging confluence between the Belt and Road Initiative and Eurasian Economic Union. Pakistan's geographical location provides it an ideal opportunity to crystallize the benefits accrues, accrued from the process. The, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, the flagship project, project of BRI, is poised to play a vital role in this regard. Excellencies, the Shanghai Corporation Organization was established to ensure security and main, maintain stability across the vast Eura Eurasian continent. Join forces to counter emerging challenges and threats and enhance trade as well as cultural cooperation. SCO stands for strict observance of this principle and the principles of the UN Charter, such as equality and sovereignty of states, respect for territorial integrity, sanctity of borders, non-aggression, non-use or threat of force, and people's right for self-determination. On the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, we strongly support the central role of the United Nations in maintaining international peace and security and advancing global sustainable development. We stress the importance of faithfully Im implementing UN Security Council resolutions for peaceful solutions of outstanding disputes to create an environment of stability and cooperation. Unilateral and illegal measures to change the status of disputed territories in violation of the UN Security Council resolutions run counter to this objective and adversely affect regional environment. Such measures must be condemned and opposed resolutely for being in violation of the SCO Charter and its well-established principles of interstate relations. Excellencies, I have consistently stressed that there is no military solution to the conflict in Afghanistan and that a negotiated political settlement is the best way forward. As a shared responsibility, Pakistan has steadfastly supported the Afghan-led and the Afghan-owned peace process. Our positive contribution facilitated the U.S.-Taliban peace agreement. The Afghan parties must seize this historic opportunity, work together constructively and secure an inclusive, broad-based and comprehensive political settlement through intra-Afghan negotiations. Reduction in violence is absolutely imperative to help strengthen the momentum reached uh, through these positive developments. We, mu we, we, we must also remain mindful of the challenges ahead, especially the role of the spoilers, the role of the spoilers within and outside who do not want peace and stability to return to Afghanistan. Return of the Afghan refugees to their homeland with dignity and honor should be an essential part of the peace negotiations. On the Iranian nuclear issue, we share SCO's call for effective implementation of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. We join our SCO partners in focusing on the prevention of an arms race in outer space and international information security. The overarching goal of the international security architecture should be the promotion of equal and undiminished secu security of all states. We welcome the emphasis by the SEO members on data security. In this regard, we strongly support China's global digital data security initiative. We reiterate our strong support for coordinating our efforts at this relevant multilateral fora to counter the, gro the growing menace of narcotic drugs. Excellencies, Pakistan has been in the forefront of the struggle against terrorism. Our resolve to continue this fight remains undeterred. We believe it is wrong to use terrorism-related allegations as a political tool to malign and target any country, religion or race. It's critical to address the scourge of terrorism in all its forms and manifestations including state terrorism perpetrated against people living under foreign occupation and disputed territories. 
as we commemorate the 75th anniversary of the defeat of Nazism and fascism during the Second World War, we must learn lessons from history and work to ensure against the resurgence of such destructive ideologies. We must also continue to steadfastly oppose extremist and xenophobic tendencies, including racist ideologies inspired by neo-Nazism and Islamophobia. We must resolute, resolutely oppose divisive policies based on prejudice and discrimination and focus on building interfaith and cross-cultural bridges. It is imperative that willful provocations and incitement to hate, especially on religious grounds, are universally outlawed. Deliberately insulting religions and sacred religious symbols provokes hatred and violent extremism, leading to further polarization and fragmentation of humanity. Therefore, SCO members should continue to call for mutual respect of all religions and beliefs and for fostering a culture of peace, fraternity and harmony. Excellencies, my government is particularly focused on providing relief to the poor segments of the society. And this inspiration we have got from the way China raised 700 million out of poverty in the last 30 years. In this context, we, we thank all members of supporting our initiative for establishing an SCO special working group on poverty alleviation. We must pool our efforts to fight the threat posed by climate change. It is important that all commitments made in the Paris Agreement on Climate Change are fulfilled. In particular, the commitment to mobilize $100 billion annually as climate finance. On its part, Pakistan is making renewed efforts to mitigate adverse effects of climate change. We have launched an ecosystem restoration initiative. I repeat, ecosystem restoration initiative, which includes the planting of 10 billion trees in the next three years. Fighting corruption and economic crimes is an, another important area of focus for my government. We welcome SCO's emphasis on strength, strengthening international cooperation in fighting these menaces. We must firmly oppose illicit financial flows from developing countries which impoverish these nations and severely retard their development endeavors. Efforts must be made to bring back the stolen wealth to enable the, the affected nations realize their legitimate aspirations for development and a hopeful future. I would like to express Pakistan's gratification on becoming a member of the SEO Youth Council. With 65% of our population under the age of 30, Pakistan highly values cooperation in tapping the immense potential of our youth and involving them in the socio-economic uplift of our societies. Excellencies, going forward, I would like to make six specific proposals aimed at galvanizing a mutually beneficially result-oriented efforts through the SCO platforms. First, we should create an SCO knowledge bank of best practices to fight COVID-19 in order to guide us through the second wave and beyond. Second, we should work out a strategy as an SCO action plan to mitigate the effects, the adverse effects on the economy of COVID-19. And it should be short term, medium and long term, including by prioritization an SEO unified framework for emergency preparations developed in consultation with the WHO. Number three, we should take a united stand that the COVID-19 vaccine must be viewed as a global public good, affordable and accessible to all. Fourth. We should call for more measures by G20 to meet common challenges like climate change, deteriorating environment, widening inequality within and among nations, poverty, disease, hunger and sustainable development, and above all, the illicit movement of money from developing world to offshore bank accounts to rich countries, which is devastating the developing world. Fifth, we should formulate a multi 
a multi-year SEO youth strategy with a focus on building partnerships among educational institutions. Sixth, we should develop SEO partnership for technology, offering scholarships and exchange pro programs for youth in the scientific field. I wish this meeting all the success. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. You have touched upon many important topics in your remarks. And I wanted to highlight one of those. It's the initiative to alleviate the debt burden of the developing economies. And Russia is making its contribution, and we're trying to alleviate this burden for our partners. We are indeed making steps on this track. Those are deliberate initiatives, and we are fully cognizant of how important it is to facilitate the efforts of the developing countries, to make their way easier. Now to uh, the engagement of youth. It's, it's a crucial thing. You've mentioned correctly, just like the other um, issues that you've mentioned, such as climate change. Russia has a broad nationwide system of measures that are geared towards improving the situation and we have some practices to share we will try to spearhead the issue the efforts on fighting these tracks and we stand ready to share our practices now to the vaccines i fully agree with you in that the vaccine should be a part of global commons you said that it's unclear when the vaccine will be fully available to everyone Dear colleague, I can reassure you that we have two registered vaccines in Russia and the trials have already confirmed that A, the vaccine is safe, there are no side effects whatsoever, and B, they are efficient and effective. Uh, the third is in the pipeline, the third vaccine. So I'm saying this, they are effective. The people who have been vaccinated and who uh, have contacts with uh, people who have contracted the coronavirus, they don't contract it themselves. This is a proven fact. And we stand ready to cooperate with our partners on this. And just like President Xi has mentioned, we urge the public at large not to add a political bias to this issue. This is no exaggeration to say that every person in the world needs this kind of medicine. And we stand ready to work with our partners within the SEO and beyond. This is what I say on the record. We are ready to work with our partners. We need certain funding to put the large-scale production online. But all the scientific and relevant potential is something that Russia has and we need right now to join the efforts on this track. I want to thank you for your cooperation and now I want... Thank you so much for watching our radio. Please share with your friends and fellows on social media. Thank you.